Welcome to this video as we continue to look at biblical descriptions of heaven for the encouragement of our souls and the strengthening of our faith. In a previous video, we meditated on the image of heaven as a paradise, a glorious and beautiful garden, which is a delight for the senses created by God. At this time, I want to draw your attention to one feature of the eternal garden, the tree of life. In the book of Genesis, there was a tree in the midst of the Garden of Eden identified as the tree of life. The tree was part of the very good creation that God had made. However, once Adam and Eve sinned and ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, once the curse was put upon them and upon creation, it would have been disastrous for them to have then eaten of the tree of life. And so as a result, God put up a guard to prevent them or any of their descendants from eating of the tree of life. Genesis chapter 3 verse 24 reads, After he drove the man out, he placed on the east side of the Garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life that Adam and Eve and their children could not enjoy this tree given by God is but one example of the sorry state of humanity as a result of sin. But God is a God of mercy and grace. God has a plan to restore creation and to make all things new. There will be a new heaven and a new earth, and that will include a place for the tree of life. In the restored and glorified garden, that we read about in Revelation chapter 22, the tree of life appears again, or some believe the trees of life, that there are many trees which bring life and healing to God's people. This is Revelation chapter 22, verses 1 and 2. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb, down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Now that God's people have been purified and forgiven, instead of having a guard, the tree is now open and accessible to the people. The redeemed can freely eat of the tree and enjoy the fruit, each fruit, a different fruit, every month. The redeemed can receive the blessings of eternal life, from God. And the fruit, the beauty of it, reminds us that God gives in abundance to his people, that he is a generous God, meeting, not only meeting our needs, but exceeding them. And the text tells us that the leaves are for the healing of the nations. In the new creation, God makes provision for our comfort and for our healing. And that reminds us that we need healing. We need spiritual healing. We are all sinners by nature and sinners by practice. We cannot come into the presence of God in our own strength and on our own merits. Because of sin, we have been estranged from God, and we all suffer from sin and its consequences. And only God can provide our healing. Only God can heal the brokenhearted and bind up the wounded. Only God can bring about peace and reconciliation. And God will provide the healing. He does provide the healing. The healing for the nations is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because of the work of the Savior, all of our hurts will be healed. All of our tears will be wiped away. Our suffering will be forever eclipsed by joy. Paul writes in Romans chapter 8, verse 18, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that we will be revealed in us. The Apostle Paul was a man who knew great sufferings. He knew all sorts of suffering. And yet he says that he considers that the present suffering, the veil of tears that he was so well acquainted with, is not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. When he thinks of the future glory, when he thinks of the healing the beauty, the magnificence of heaven. He says our present sufferings, they pale in comparison. In the future, in the new heaven and the new earth, there will be no more suffering. 
but glory will be characterized by life and health, by healing, joy, and peace. And we are reminded of that as we think of the tree of life. Well, let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the image of the tree of life, that in you there is life. And our Father, we thank you for this picture that the leaves of the tree of life are for the healing of the nations. And our Heavenly Father, we thank you that you promise to heal every wound, to restore every person who is brokenhearted. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for these promises that are in the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray in his name. Amen. Amen. And once again, it is our prayer, my prayer, that this video has been for your blessing and a reminder that these promises that we are looking at are for those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, those who have faith in him. And if you have not yet trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ, then I encourage you to do so because in Christ and in Christ alone, there is forgiveness and eternal life and this abundant and glorious life that we have been meditating on in these videos. Thank you again for watching, and may the Lord's blessing be upon you. God bless.